I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer. And, you know, I'm, we've started this and I want to continue it and even expand it. Questions from clients from the consultants. So boots on the ground and I'm just going to dive right in. And this first question is from Sari. Uh, she's the consultant and Zoe is the client. I am with Wells Fargo and just bought a house. I bought the house on margin. So no mortgage, but borrowed by margin, which means that she put up the securities in her account and borrowed against them. Oh, did I do the right thing? What are the upsides or downsides to this type of purchase? They are telling me it's a smart move. If it is so smart, why am I questioning it? Because you have really good gut instincts, Zoe. That's why you're questioning it. Because what you've done is, is key. When you sign a margin agreement at a bank, you absolutely agree in that agreement to allow them to use your equity for their benefit. And that means that they can use it as collateral to borrow and do anything else that they want with it. That's why for the banks that you did this with, it's a good deal for them. But the interest rates are typically variable. And if the stock market goes down, then you are going to get margin calls, meaning you're going to have to come up with money when the stock market goes down. Now, hey, if it keeps going up to the moon in a Lorna Dune, well, then you're not going to get those margin calls. But when you do get those margin calls, then you will be forced to sell whatever the market wants to buy, whether that's what you want to sell or not. So actually, I, I do not think this is a smart move because we are in an interest rate environment that is artificially low until it's not. So per, you do whatever you're comfortable with. That's what everybody should always do, regardless of what anybody says. But if it were me, I would get my butt out and get a fixed rate mortgage on that house. Then make sure that your gold holdings are sufficient to pay that mortgage off during the reset. And all of the consultants have all of the formulas to do this. So it's not rocket science. It's just based upon the true fundamental value at right now that doesn't actually say what it's going to be when they do the reset, when they reset the dollars against gold and then gold goes to its fundamental value or somewhere near it. Uh, and then you grab some of those gains and pay that mortgage off. But no, I would never, ever personally consider, number one, you don't want a margin account because that's the green light for them to use your equity. And if they fail, if they get into trouble, guess what? You're not getting your equity back. Yes, I know SIPC insures it to 500,000 or whatever the number is, just like FDIC insurance insures it for 250, but that money doesn't actually really exist. There isn't enough money to cover that. So it's great as long as everything's are hunky-dory. No, and I would do this really quickly. You're going to be able to lock in super low mortgage rates right now. You just want to make sure that you have the gold over here to pay that mortgage off. No, don't buy property on margin. Don't do it. It, it, it is a recipe for disaster, honestly. Wow. Okay. But... Trust your gut. And I'm going to say that to everybody out there. You should always trust your gut because it is your job to do what is in your best interest first. That's really the whole purpose of this channel is to translate that financial noise so that you can make educated choices that puts your best interest first. That's why I give you all the links. Don't take anybody's word for it. Your gut was telling you, this is not a good thing. They talked you into it. 
And so, I mean, go get a, a fixed rate mortgage, pay this margin o- margin account off and tell them that you do not want a margin account at all and see if you can back out of that signature. Even if, well, you know, I mean, if you have a margin account, you have stocks and bonds and ETFs and mutual funds and all those things. That's what you're borrowing against. It's not like you have your physical gold account and you're using that in a margin account. So you have bigger issues than just whether or not you're buying the house on the margin. But you didn't ask me that, so I won't go there. Um, However, yeah, get that into a very inexpensive fixed rate loan and execute the strategy. Siri can help you do that. And uh, this one is from Martin. And his client, Kevin, asks, how do we access cash since we are retired and protect or minimize this cash from exp- he's got uh, like five questions, so I'm just going to go with one at a time. Uh, how do we access cash since we are retired and protect or minimize this cash for inflation exposure? Well, you offset it with your gold and your silver, but the cash will ultimately go to zero value, meaning you know, you're not going to really be able to use it much as a tool of barter. Maybe you'll need a wheelbarrow you know, or a digital form of wheelbarrow to do it. But uh, need to move away from Bank of America as our banker suggestions. Well, you know, here's the thing. If you're with Bank of America, that means you're also with Merrill Lynch, which, which is probably where you're holding stuff. And actually, that goes to the next question. Uh, you know, Bank of America, like Chase, Wells Fargo, these are the guys that have been deemed, you know, too big to fail. But you have to understand that poopy runs downhill. So uh, there really is no safe, no truly safe bank or credit union or community banks because the credit unions and the and the uh, community banks get their cash and get their stuff from the commercial banks, which is what Bank of America is. So, you know, I too, you know, hey, I'm with Chase. Do I like being with Chase? Not really. And I hope they're not listening so they cut me off. But it it's convenient because of the way my business is set up. We have to have them, but it's how much we use them. And what do we have in there? Can you afford to lose it? You know, you said that you are retired. So my guess is that you have a lot of principal that is now um, exposed and vulnerable. And you might really want to take a look at that because a truly diversified portfolio. Well, what have you got? If you're going to have these fiat money assets, if you're going to have risk assets, which anything that you can only convert into dollars is, it's a risk asset then a properly diversified portfolio has some real tangible assets to offset it. At ITM Trading, that's gold and silver. But you guys see me wear jewelry, some of it's costumes, some of it's real, but it's all tangible, right? Which means that I can convert it into the currency as I need it, including for a margin loan. Not that I I don't have that because I don't hold any stocks or bonds at this point in the trend cycle. But um, I I can't make a suggestion for you to move away from Bank of America uh, and Merrill Lynch. Uh, I mean, do I love them? No. You know, you have to do what you're comfortable with. They're kind of on that, you know, government list. So I'll just go to the next one. Sorry. How do we deal with a transfer of the LMALOC on our home until we pay it off? Oh, from hard assets or do we tie to our assets? So the LMALOC is also a margin account. So listen to the question, the very first question. Right? And that's how I would answer that. That is very, 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 very dangerous. It's dangerous. 
We are in an environment where they're basically giving mortgages away because they're doing whatever they can to keep this real estate bubble floating until the whole thing explodes. And it will. We've got lots of things coming on. You want to be in a cheap fixed rate mortgage at that time. So I would tell you, do whatever you're comfortable with. You know, Kevin, I can't really tell you what to do, but this is not the choice that I would personally make. I would go even to Bank of America and get a cheap fixed rate mortgage. That's the one that you are going to be able to pay off with your hard assets. If you have anything that's variable, when the interest rates really start to spike, you will never be able to pay it off ever. So be strategic about it, particularly since you are retired. This is about wealth preservation. You need to make sure that you have that covered because I'm thinking if you're retired, you don't really want to start from scratch, especially with what we're going into. And then um, the next part is, should we split our portfolio with an investment firm in Arizona to transfer our LMALOC on the house or what should we do? Well, you, you can't because the LMALOC, frankly, is a Merrill Lynch product. It's a product. Uh, so refer to the above answer. And then the last question from Kevin is depository versus safe deposit box versus home safe. Well, you know, I hold my gold and silver in a private safe deposit box. I do not hold it in a bank safe deposit box or a depository like that because it's too closely tied to the government. And it's very easy for them to just go in. And, you know, I mean, when I was a consultant, I I remember this little old lady that lived in Northern California who magically had her safe deposit box in one of the larger banks drilled open. And she only knew that because she got an apology letter because the only thing she held in there were collectible coins which you can hold in a bank safe deposit box. If you hold cash or you hold bullion gold or bullion coins in there, it is classified as hoarding. And so if for any reason they choose to go into your safe deposit box, whether or not that stuff will be there after they're done is questionable. You know, they could leave it or may not. Um, having said that, you also want to be diversified in that way. I'm not, obviously, because of what I do. But uh, when before I became this visible, I created a whole bunch of hidey holes in my, uh, I lived in a condo. So in my condo, I put in a bookshelf that looked like a regular bookshelf, but actually it pulled out and there was a tremendous amount of space It was between a wall and the stove. So you have to be creative about it. You know, at home, you want things that you're going to need like that. Because when this next crisis hits, you can think back to March when everything froze. Think back to September 2019 when everything froze. You aren't going to know about it one second before. So if you want to keep something at home, you need to be really discreet. There's a two-inch kick plate underneath your cabinets. That is dead space. You can utilize that. Um, Actually, I put together a one sheet years ago. So you can ask uh, Martin for that and he'll send it to you. And those are just some ideas. But, you know, you have to be really, um, you have to be strategic about it. And you might want to hold some cash and some barterable gold and silver in your home and the collectible coins to pay off the mortgage and do those other things in a private vault or private safe deposit box. And uh, now I'll go on to Keely's question. And this is from Victoria S. And she asks, how is it that I hear all of the gloom and doom? Hmm, This is a good question. But people are still building houses, remodeling, doing add-ons and making big purchases. New businesses are opening up. What's going on? Well, In a nutshell, Victoria, 
Lots and lots and lots of cheap debt. Look at the explosion in both personal debt as well as corporate debt as well as government debt. So that's how this is going on. When you're looking at the larger corporations, because here, I live in Phoenix, right? And, you know, you can write, and there are high rises going up like crazy. Well, what you have to understand about that is that those mortgages and how they intend to pay those back, let's say it's a, let's say it's an apartment rental uh, building that's going up. Well, they have the collateral could be the rent payments, which we know in this particular environment, you know, we're in a K-shaped recovery. So those that are in the bottom of the K are having an awfully hard time meeting their rent payments. And there are a number of people that are making, are having a really hard time meeting their mortgage payments. So, but these things have been not on an individual level because we don't have access to securitization, but at a corporate level, these, these developments are being securitized, turned into securities, and then sold back to you. So you're actually paying for all of this risk and you're risking your principal for a teeny weeny weeny bit of interest because risk is not being priced properly. We've had really no good price discovery probably before this, but at least since 2008 and 2009, when the central banks came out and overtly said, we're going to manage these markets. They have managed these markets into a ditch. They have managed these markets since 1971 or even 1913. What is the value, the purchasing power value of the dollar? So how great a job have the central banks done on your behalf. They've done a crappy job. Uh, so that's really what's going on. They're turned into security and, and for savers, there is such a search and a hunger for yield. This is called financial repression and is one of the central bank tools because they know, you know, listen to the talking heads, listen to mainstream media and what you'll hear them say is relatively speaking, nominally, right? When you hear those words, what you know is that the true risk and the true value is not being revealed, not being revealed. You have to determine whether or not you're comfortable with that risk and you're properly diversified. But that's what's happening. That's why you're seeing, you know, all, and the new businesses, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful for that. But, you know, with the new businesses going up, a lot of people lost their jobs. And so that happens a lot when you can't find another job, you create one. I don't really think that that's a bad thing. What will be interesting to see as this whole piece evolves is whether or not those people that start those businesses, those new businesses, do they have the savings put back to get through hard times because all of those businesses that do not exist anymore that were forced to shut down and could no longer open up, they did not have enough savings to weather this storm. The big corporations, they've got Wall Street and, you know, 3000% in, in, in a day or two, the stock goes up when there are no earnings and there are no profits, but a mom and pop cannot afford no profits. They have to generate that income. So that's what's going on with the new businesses. And this one is from uh, Ben and it's Andres from Denver. I'm interested in converting my IRA to an IRA precious metal strategy. I'm hesitant and want to learn more about the depositories that hold the IRA metals. How safe are they from theft from the government? Well, if the government does an overt confiscation, there is no depository that's going to go, but wait, we can't, we're not going to comply. We're going to protect the gold that is owned by or presumably owned by you. So, <coughs> excuse me. 
personally, I had a SEP IRA. The choice that I made, and everybody's got to do what they're comfortable with. I can't say that enough, and I can't tell you what to do. But I can tell you what I have done personally. I liquidated that SEP IRA, and I converted it all into collectible gold coins. So I still have my retirement. That's my retirement. I paid my taxes. I even paid some penalties because we entered that last phase and I got nervous. And I'm so glad I did because I feel very secure in my retirement. Now you have to ask yourself also because typically people don't want to take a distribution from their IRA, (coughs) excuse me, because they don't want to pay the taxes. And I'm not sure that this is over yet, so check with your tax accountant, but I do believe that the penalties have been, well, they've been COVID waived. I don't know if that expired or not. It may have. Double, Double check on that one. But if you're going to do gold in the IRA, and let's say gold is at 1840 something right now, and that's where you convert it into, and it goes to a fundamental value, and you go to take a distribution either by liquidating the gold into the fiat, which would be insane, or having them ship the physical gold to you. All you can do inside of an IRA is monetary bullion gold. That's all you can do. Just check. You can't do the collectible coins in there. Well, if they are somewhere near their fundamental value, or even if they are up, then you're going to pay taxes on that distribution. Now, personally, I felt much better about paying my taxes, you know, when I did this, because I'd rather pay, that means I'm paying less taxes on those gains when I take the distribution. I don't know if I stated that clearly, but if, let me do it one more way. Um, let's say that, okay, it's, I'll make life easy. It's 2000 bucks now. If you, if you, well, no, if you just have the stocks in there, you're going to pay taxes on the distribution. But if you convert it into a, a precious metals IRA and you pay $2,000 for an ounce of gold and gold goes to $10,000, now you're paying your taxes on that $10,000. Now, granted, when you liquidate it outside of the IRA, all good citizens always pay all taxes that are due, and so you will be paying your taxes, but there are different strategies and different things. I would rather pay my taxes on the smaller amount than the larger amount, at least initially, because it's not private in an IRA. Not private. And all you can do is monetary bullion gold. So that is it. For this Q&A session, we're going to be recording another one and stay tuned to our socials. We'll let you know when they're going to be released. But this week, I was on the BABY Investment and Research Channel with Antonio over in Belgium. And the video is now on his channel live. And it's also, there's a link in the description below. And this morning, I did a live or, okay, well, because we're recording this, but I did a live uh, Coffee with Lynette with Egon Von Greers, who you know, you guys, I absolutely love him. Such a brilliant, brilliant man. And if you haven't seen that video yet, go watch it. We both had a great time. So I think it was a really good video. Next week, I'm going to be on with Jake Ducey over at I Love Prosperity. And we had such a fantastic time the last time. And that will probably be my very first million viewed video so on his channel. So that's pretty darn exciting. And I'll be on with him uh, Tuesday, February 16th. He usually takes a little bit longer to get those videos out. At least he did when we did the last one. So again, stay tuned to our socials. We'll let you know when that's rolling out. But, you know, if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Keep those questions coming. So, I I mean, I love getting these from the consultants, from the clients. So please keep them coming. And keep in mind, too, that it's absolutely time to cover your assets. 
And here at ITM Trading, we do that with the Wealth Shield. And frankly, you know, paper, pretty easy to rip and puncture. So shields, much stronger, much, much stronger with physical metals. And your Wealth Shield for your, for in gold and silver will protect you like it has for six thousand years. Give me history. It always repeats. So until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.